Thank you so much for having us. So just to set the stage, uh, I'm with Excel, we're a venture capital fund. We're very happy investors in Deliveroo. Um, I've known Will for a few years now, actually. And um, I wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about the early days at Deliveroo and uh, his evolution as a CEO and how he came up with the idea and how he got to where the business is today. So, Will, I don't think that you spoke publicly a lot about the initial idea of Deliveroo and how it's evolved into what it is today. Would you like to, to tell the audience about that? Sure. Um, you know, I, I came to London so, so, so long story short, you know, my first job out of college, I worked in New York um, in investment banking, and that's when I discovered food delivery really out of necessity, because I had to work very late every night. And this is 2001, this is before there was internet ordering, and, uh, you know, despite that, um, you know, we would take physical menus, call up restaurants, but despite that, the experience was very good in New York. Uh, high quality restaurants, you got your food quickly. Then I was transferred out here, and in Canary Wharf in 04, um, there were very few restaurants. And as Klaus said, I ended up going to Burger King all the time. Um, and, but, you know, there, there was just no delivery at all. Um, and then, you know, a few years later, the, the likes of Just Eat and Hungry House really took off and they become very big companies. Um, for me, uh, the issue with those two services, or the online marketplace model, was that, you know, I didn't really recognize um, the restaurants on the platform. And then I didn't really know when my food was going to get here. And, and to me, those were two things that we wanted to work with. I think Deliveroo, um, the initial thought, though, behind it wasn't mm -hmm. necessarily all of, all of that I said. Basically, <laughs> we wanted to actually start a food delivery service um, to get food after hours when we were drunk. Right. right. So we, yeah, we actually, <laughs> we actually called that booze food. Um, and um, that, that was, you know, it was actually, it was actually a serious idea, but, but it, you know, we, we then realized no restaurants were open late and probably wouldn't work. Um, but uh, yeah, that was kind of, that was kind of the, the, the initial, uh, um, initial permutation. And how long did it take you from coming up with the idea and thinking, okay, this is something I might want to do at some point to actually, you know, quitting your job and, and doing this full time? Very long time. I mean, I thought of the idea literally two weeks after I landed in London. Right. right. Because there was no food delivery. And, and when you're used to something like that in New York, you, you know, you're, you're, you, 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 it's just a habit and you can't figure out why it doesn't exist in, you know, the most cosmopolitan city in the world, right? Um, but obviously, I had a job um, and, you know, I, I, I worked in banking and in finance and every year you make more and more money and then, you know, you, it's just very hard to, to, to leave. I, I left um, to actually go to business school. Right. So for me, it, it was, I didn't start Deliveroo right after um, you know, quitting my job. I actually had two years in business school to really you know, think about what I wanted to do. But this, this idea was always you know, paramount in my mind. And is this something that you recommend? We have a lot of early entrepreneurs here or, or people that have ideas and might want to start something. Do you feel that you developed skills that otherwise maybe you wouldn't have had? Um, do you feel that business school was actually helpful in becoming it, a it good founder as you? It was very helpful in the sense that I'm not sure I would have actually, I think I was too risk adverse to, to just quit my job right. and start, whereas you know, going, going to, to business school was you know, in many ways um, a way where I could explain why I didn't do anything except <laughs> you know, have fun for two years, right? Um, but I think for me, I, I love business school, I loved every moment of it, um, you know, very proud to, to, to have gone to Wharton, uh, you know, I met great people. Ultimately, what they teach you in, in classes is interesting, and you meet great professors and all of that, but, uh, you know, you're not going to learn how to start a company from, from doing right. that. You just have to do it. Um, but, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an amazing experience. So fast forward, I guess, a few years, you launched the company, the first couple of neighborhoods were actually near where I live, South Kensington. And I remember that within a few months, a lot of my friends started talking about the service, Deliveroo. I thought the name was funny initially. Um, and um, a lot of people started using it. There was a lot of buzz, a lot of word of mouth. W was there a point where you thought, oh wow, this could be bigger than I initially thought. The, the demand for this could be massive, actually. Yeah, um, it's a really, really good question. You know, when when we started Deliveroo, the idea wasn't, okay, let's look at the TAM, let's look at right. all the stuff you guys do. That's not, that's not <laughs> what I did. The stuff, yeah. yeah. 
Well, it's just that, you know, I, there was a consumer, I, I felt as a consumer, this is what I wanted, mm -hmm. and my friends wanted it, um, and looked into economically if it would work, it seemed like it would, and, and the, the thought process was literally that. It wasn't, you know, much more sophisticated than that. And so I knew that people in Chelsea w would like right. it. Um, because my friends live there, et cetera, and the, those types of neighborhoods would like it. I think it was when, when we started going to neighborhoods that were a little bit further out of central London, mm -hmm. and, and the retention and the frequency was the same, and that's when we realized, wow, this you know, could be a lot bigger. And then when we go into cities you know, like as small as Guildford or, right. or, or Leamington Spa, you know, places that, frankly, I haven't been before, um, y you know, you, you're, you're like, wow, so this is a very mainstream product. Right. Okay, it, very cool, and to be honest, very, very much in line with my thinking. And in those first, let's say, 12 months, year and a half, are there particular challenges that you'd like to share and that you think that early entrepreneurs could relate to and maybe learn from? <laughs> so many, I right? Mean, but yeah, um, you know, every day is a challenge. Um, you know, for me, I think specifically, uh, I, I, I talk about this sometimes, but I was a delivery driver every single day for eight months, seven days a week, six, seven, eight hours a day. Um, and not because, you know, I had to do it. Well, I, I, I was pretty cheap, I guess. I financed it, you know, the business <laughs> myself did. in the beginning. But, but I think, you know, really just to understand what exactly, you know, drivers go through, what is the, the experience, what, what is the customer interaction like, what's the restaurant interaction like. Um, and so during the day, I would actually try to pitch restaurants and come up with product ideas and things like that. And mm -hmm. at night, I would actually deliver food. Um, so I think it was super challenging from a, you know, almost like f fatigue standpoint, right? Because, you know, you're just doing all this stuff all the time and you don't always see the light at the end of the tunnel. And so it's, um, you know, it gets pretty exhausting. And also, you, you know, some of your friends just think, you know, you've gone completely insane <laughs> because you're, you're just going around delivering food all day. But um, you know, you look back upon those days, you know, and actually it's like, that was a lot of fun too, right? It, yeah. it was, you know, it, it, anything, you know, seemed possible, right? So it, it's, it's very cool, but yeah, definitely challenging. I'm really glad you bring this up because I remember when we were looking at a potential investment in the early days, one of the things that my partners and myself really admired about you was that you did probably, if not all the jobs within the company, definitely many of them, from, as you said, food delivery to you know, hang, hand, handing out flyers in tube stations on weekends. I remember you were trying to convince your friends to join you and hand out delivery flyers to customer service. Do you think that was helpful or do you think, you know what, if CEOs can just focus on the strategic part of the business and on the core part of being a CEO, that's what they should do if they have um, the luxury. I mean, when you have three people at the company, it's not like, <laughs> right. I don't so know what strategy no means, yeah, you just yeah. kind of, you have to get shit done, so, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that, you know, doing every job in the company is, is helpful. Obviously, that's not helpful anymore no. um, at all. I but guess. but I think in the beginning, yeah, because you, you've been through it, you can educate people about, hey, this is, these are my thoughts, what do you think we can do better, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But it's usually out of necessity, not by design. Okay, right? got it. So you, you don't deliver food any longer? No, I do, but just for, more, often, for, more yeah. for exercise. Right. Because you, you do it on a bicycle. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. It's actually a great workout. And if you guys are looking for a job or, you know, anything like that, you know, we can chat about that because <laughs> you can get paid and it's a great workout. Do you have any funny stories from those early days delivering food and handing out flyers? Yeah, I have that, one. That you're comfortable to share? <laughs> <laughs> I have two funny stories. I remember um, one of the restaurants I worked with, The Real Greek, which is a really great yeah. restaurant, they... Um, they had this Marlebone neighborhood fair, I remember, in like May or June. And they asked me, because they thought it was funny, I'm pretty sure they, this is the only reason they asked me to do this, to wear a kangaroo costume and, ha and hand out like flyers. And I kind of didn't want to do it, you know, I was like, I was like, you know, because I, I don't, I, I used to wear it all the time, so they thought it was super funny, but I, did, I personally didn't like doing it, so I wore it, and I'm walking around, and um, these, these two women, that they must be like, you know, mid-twenties, not, not like little girls, just pull, uh, pulling my tail, right? Oh my like, and, I, and I was like, can you, can you guys stop? Because, you know, it's like you guys are, you know. And then, and then, then more people started pulling my tail. Oh. And then I was just like, you know, I was pretty, I was pretty annoyed. So that's pretty fu that one funny pretty story. Funny, yeah. Second funny story um, is actually, I ended up delivering food to a former colleague of mine 
um, that I worked at a hedge fund, and I hadn't caught up with him. And he opened the door, and he was like, you know, he has this really thick Italian accent. He was like, Will, uh, are you okay? And, 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 and I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I was kind of shocked, you know, I didn't, I didn't know what to say. And he's like, well, uh, you know, if you need anything, uh, let me know. <laughs> so he, he just thought I'd be, you know, just yeah. went nuts. So yeah. um, that was pretty funny. That is pretty funny. So fast forward a few years now, I guess three and a half. You know, you, you've done a lot. You're in, what, 90 cities now, you say? Um, has your vision for Deliveroo changed significantly? Do you, and in line with this, do you think of it as a food business or do you think of it as a logistics business where at some point you can leverage this wonderful fleet for many other verticals? Um, you know, the vertical of food is, is one of the biggest in the world. Right. Um, it's the one that we want to focus on. I think where my vision has shifted somewhat though is for the first three and a half years, we've been laser focused on really two fundamental areas. One is working with the best restaurants in your local neighborhood, and the second thing is getting that food to you in about half an hour. Those are just two things we're obsessed with, and mm -hmm. you know the metrics are the same across the 90 cities in 12 countries, right? Mm -hmm. And now that's proven to be very important for customers, but there's a you know third element that's becoming increasingly important as well, which is price, right? Um, and price is defined as two things. It's really the delivery fee side, which in the UK we charge 250, and then the price of food. Right. I want a lower price over time. Um, and, and to do that on the delivery fee side is pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. um, once you increase your driver productivity to a certain point, you can elect to lower that fee, you know, and take a lower margin, but, you know, reach more people perhaps, right? The cost of food side is actually, is, is actually a bit different, right? Mm -hmm. There, um, we, don't, we don't control that, right? The restaurants dictate what the prices are. Um, and, and so one interesting point for us is actually, we've been investing in a series of mobile kitchens in London, and maybe some of you guys have read about this. And, and the ideas really stem from the fact that for some of our restaurant partners, we represent 10 to 30% incremental revenue. Right. Which sounds great, and it is great, but on the other hand, it can cause significant disruptions in, in, in their in-house business, right? And restaurants build their brand on an in-house experience. And if we compromise that in any way, that's, that's, a, that's a real issue. That being said, it's a good issue to, to, to try to work on, right? So number one, we built you know, these little kitchens in, in really low value real estate areas that are adjacent to high value real estate areas. The restaurants operate these kitchens, right? And it allows them to reduce capacity in the restaurant. The second reason we do it is we can bring supply to areas that lack it, right? So that becomes very interesting. Um, so an area like Barnes that doesn't have a lot of restaurants, we can put a few of these roo boxes, as we call them there, and our restaurants can operate them. But thirdly, what, what's really exciting to me is, you know, thinking about a restaurant's economics, right? You know, restaurants are 75% are gross margin businesses, so the cost of food's like 25%. Um, property costs are about 15% of revenue in London. Uh, uh, um, front of house labor is 25% of revenue. So if you effectively tell a restaurant, I'm gonna remove 40% of your, of your P&L just out, right? Um, you know, you'll have much higher margins if you sell right. to us, but maybe actually I want you to work with me to lower the price of food right. so we can reach you know, more customers together, build a much bigger business, um, increase frequency tremendously, and that becomes super exciting for me. Um, so that's, that's something that, you know, we're really focused on. And at the same time, we're also creating exclusive, exclusive content on Deliveroo, which, which, you know, I know people don't think of us as, you know, as a media company or anything like that, but when you see what Netflix did when distribution mm -hmm. costs got, got competed away and other people were able to bid more, well, because they had that captive audience base and they knew what people wanted to watch, they were able to, you know, produce their own content. Now, obviously, food and, 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 and House of Cards is... is <laughs> very different, I accept that. But, but it's, 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 it's similar thinking, I think. So what I'm hearing is that wherever there is demand, there should be the over supply. And if you have to help create some of that supply, that's great. We wanna, we wanna own you know, and help solve the really hard problems, right? Mm -hmm. um, and another example that you and I have talked about is Amazon, how with you know, FBA, um, the warehouses are not just there for their retail business, but actually for their marketplace clients. And so, you know, really, really thinking about 
how do we help restaurants expand? How do we, you know, just 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 you know have people substitute away from cooking at home and mm -hmm. and eating microwave meals and bringing much better food to people at lower prices? That that's the mission. I think that's a very exciting mission. I am biased. You, you to are say. a bit biased, yes. <laughs> and I'm a, a big <laughs> consumer as well. So. Uh, there are a lot of questions that I'd love to, to ask you, and I think I'm sure the audience would love to hear the answers. But I'll, um, as my last question, because we have a lot of early entrepreneurs here, you know, no story is perfect, and I'm not going to ask what mistakes have you made, but I would love to ask you, what would you do differently if, if you look back at the last three and a half years? Um, you, know, um, you know, a number of things for sure, but, but I think... Um, I think one big challenge that we had specifically was that my co-founder and I were, you know, not in the same place. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that um, you know, and, and Greg did an amazing job, obviously, building yeah. all the initial technology. But, you know, having, you know, kind of a co-located co-founder <laughs> um, is, is, is pretty challenging. And so I, I probably wouldn't recommend that to anyone. But Fair I don't enough. even think that happens that often. Right, so it was a special, it was, it was special pretty, setup. Pretty special setup, yeah. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for taking the time and for answering all my questions. Thank you, guys. I appreciate being here.